Hello, Rob here, and welcome to R&B Reviews. It is time to get the Christmas season underway with a film that doesn't show up on a lot of people's Christmas watch list. After all, who wants to watch a movie about a dysfunctional royal family scheming and plotting against one another, right? Well, the movie that I'm going to be reviewing today is called The Lion in Winter, and I'm also kicking off the Christmas winter season by wearing my winter sucks shirt right here. Yeah. I mean, I like Christmas, but sometimes I just don't like dealing with the snow in the winter time. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, anyway, let's get to the movie. The movie, that Lion in Winter, was actually based off of a 1966 play by James Goldman depicting the personal and political conflicts of King Henry II of England, his wife Eleanor of Aquitaine, their children, and guests during Christmas of 1183. It was made not once in one adaptation, but two adaptations right here. First was the 1968 theatrical release starring established talent Peter O'Toole and Katherine Hepburn, who won a Best Actress Oscar for her role, and it also stars then up-and-coming talent Anthony Hopkins as Richard, and, and the older son, and Timothy Dalton as the King of France. The second version was made for TV, and it aired in the U.S. on the Showtime channel in uh, 2003, starring Patrick Stewart and Glenn Close. The story of The Lion in Winter is it's set during Christmas 1183. King Henry of England has invited his three sons, his estranged, imprisoned wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and the King of France to join him for Christmas. His eldest son, Henry, has died, and now the king must decide upon a new heir. Henry wants his youngest son, John, uh, to inherit the throne, while Eleanor favors their oldest surviving son, Richard. Meanwhile, King Philip of France has given his half-sister Alice, or Elise, depending on which version you watch, uh, she is currently Henry's mistress, and he has given his half-sister to the future heir, and he demands either a wedding take place or return her dowry. So as you can sense from the storyline, there's quite a lot of drama going on. Uh, for those of you that have not seen either film, I'll just give a quick lowdown of, or rundown of the lead characters. Henry is about 50 years old, and he manipulates his family and others in a more spontaneous and emotional level. Queen Eleanor has persuaded their sons to rebel against Henry in 1173, almost 10 years before, and for her role in the rebellion, she was imprisoned by Henry. Uh, she schemes against Henry, yet loves him intensely at the same time. Um, John is the youngest of the sons, Henry and Eleanor. He's so, a sulky, overgrown, spoiled teen boy, and he is Henry's favorite, but he's also the weakest of the sons. Jeffrey is the middle son who is a cold, plotting schemer. His view of himself is one that yearns greatly for the love of his parents, yet never felt like he never received any. And Richard is the oldest surviving son of Henry and Eleanor. He's easily the strongest and toughest of the three princes. Elise, or Alice, um, she's in love with Henry and doesn't want to be married to Richard or John, and she was raised by Eleanor as a child. And we also have Philip II, who is the King of France. He's been king for about three years, and he's not a pushover for Henry like his father was. All right, now let us begin with reviewing these two adaptations. Let's start with the 1968 version. This version is very well put together. The script has witty, snarky one-liners, dramatic tension, and is thought-provoking all around. How dear of you to let me out of jail. It's only for the holidays. Christmas. Warm and rosy time. The hot wine steams, the yule log roars, and we're the fat that's in the fire. Go on, sir! Go on, sir! A knife! He's got a knife! Of course he has a knife. He always has a knife. We all have knives. It's 1183 and we're barbarians. What do we have? The holly or each other? You don't really need to know the character's backstory as the dialogue helps the explain to the audience what is what has been going on before and during these events without banging the audience over the head with details. I really like the look of and feel of this version, thanks to established director of photographer Douglas Slocum, who worked on quite a number of important movies throughout his career. While some of the movie was shot in the studio, there was a lot of location work, and all these scenes made me feel like I was in and around Henry's castle. Lion and Winter has some very interesting characters, as I mentioned, with each having their own agenda and character personalities. You get the impression that the brothers really don't like each other. O'Toole and Hepburn have great chemistry together as the king and queen. I love seeing them share scenes together as they try to top one another, or um, ironic scenes where they are walking together for Christmas dinner hand in hand, the whole castle is cheering, and as they're nodding to everyone, they're still throwing jabs and threats to one another. <laughs> Don't fight me, Eleanor. What would you have me do? Give out, give up, give in? Give me a little peace. A little? Why so modest? 
How about eternal peace? Now there's a thought. O'Toole is fantastic in the role. He yells and growls much like the lion in the title. He's unpredictable, and in emotional scenes he speaks slowly and softly and then just builds it on up. O'Toole made me feel like he was saying each line as he was actually thinking them up himself before actually saying them. So it was great to have him feel like, you know, you're hearing this character work and everything. Hepburn is great as um, Henry's conniving wife, and I love how she delivers her dialogue here. And I thought the rest of the cast delivered pretty well. Hopkins was great, although a little stiff, as the Honest Richard. John Castle was great as the sneaky Jeffrey. And I like Nigel Terry as the overgrown boy John. Timothy Dalton holds his own as King Philip, and Jane Merrill I thought was fine in the role of Elise or Alice. The movie is full of great set pieces, full of wit, tender moments, and dramatic ones. The only issue I really had with this version was sometimes the movie can be static, especially in longer scenes that take place in one room, but I thought the acting and the look of the film, in addition to the script, delivered. Now with the 2003 version, I hear people all the time say that remakes are often not as good as the original, and I've often said that myself. This version wasn't bad, but it was just different, but it was interesting to see how everyone tried to make this version different and how the actors tried to make their performances their own, you know, from the 1968 film. First off, this version opens up and shows war outside of the castle and shows more backstory. For example, there is an opening scene of Eleanor and Richard leading a civil war against Henry that they are losing, and we see the consequence of Eleanor being locked up for it. This might be good for an audience who wants more explanation of what has happened before the story started. Now, while the 1968 film made me feel like I was at this particular time period, this film made me feel like I was... Like, like this, this was taking place in December. You know, the look of this version made me feel like the, the cold and winter feel of the story. And I also like the costumes and the sets of this production as well. However, I found this version to lack the intensity and snarkiness of the 1968 film. First, I found Patrick Stewart to be more upbeat and not as dramatic, and earlier on I felt like he was just reciting the dialogue while Peter O'Toole made me feel like he was actually thinking these thoughts in his head before saying them. Also missing was some of the unpredictability and passion. However, by the second hour of this movie, I felt like we got to see more dramatic scenes, especially with Eleanor and Stewart. I thought finally got the needed intensity right there. Now who do you claim? My God, boys, you can't all three be king. All three of us can try. Mr. be king. I care because you care so much. Don't fight me, Eleanor. How many husbands do you know who dungeon up their wives? I also liked how Stuart, you know, played up the romance with his mistress Elise and uh, made me feel like despite being betrayed by Eleanor deep down, he still loved her, which I didn't feel quite as much with O'Toole's performance. Glenn Close was just as good as Hepburn in plotting and scheming, and she plays off all of her performing partners very well, and she handled the snarky dialogue very well. Now with the brothers, they came across more with playful jesting rather than aggression like the first film. I did like that Richard in this version was more open and more wounded in his relationship with his parents. I also thought that he was at his best when he was sharing scenes with Glenn Close. The actor playing Jeffrey is, I thought was just as good as the devious Jeffrey. Um, Rafe Spalp um, is John here. He does tone down the overgrown child uh, persona and makes him more confused and more awkward. Now, the actress playing Elise, I thought, made more of an impression than her predecessor did. She actually attempts a French accent and um, brings out m more of her frustration um, at Henry for playing games with people's feelings. Now, John Rhys Myers, I thought, was the only one in the cast other than Glenn Close that really brought that uh, needed aggressiveness as King Philip, but I thought that the filmmakers kind of overdid it on making him too beautiful for the part, while Timothy Dalton, you know, it was a little bit more suggested. Now, another plus with this version was the camera work and the actor's movement, was, I thought, was a little bit better here. Even though this version was longer, it, I think that it helped keep longer scenes from being static for too long. I like that there were more scenes outside the castle, such as where Henry is giving out food to villagers, um, and I felt like it allowed the film to breathe a little bit more. While I like that the filmmakers and cast tried not to copy their predecessors, and I like the look of this production, I felt like some of the characters and scenes lacked the, dram the dramatic tension that was needed. So which version do I recommend? Well, this is kind of tough because they both have their pros and their cons, and as I mentioned, both versions are different. 
I do recommend giving both versions a look for different reasons, but, but when it comes to acting, I recommend the original 1968 film. O'Toole really brings out the emotional and unpredictability of Henry, and Hepburn is great as his counterpart. When Glenn Close um, I thought, she, while she was fantastic in the 2003 version, I thought Stuart mostly didn't bring out the lion in the character enough. And also, uh, the brothers in the 1968 film I thought was more intense and competitive with one another that I thought was lacking in the 2003 version. But for most people, but for people that are unfamiliar with, with the backstory of Henry and Eleanor, the, two, the 2003 version explains the, the story of what happened before, you know, this movie takes place and perhaps that might be a place, a good place for them to start for some people before moving on to the 1968 film. Both films are worth a look. I felt like the 1968 version did a good job at recreating, at, you know, being at Henry's Castle while the 2003 version did a better job at recreating the cold winter feel of the time. All right, well, that's my review of The Lion in Winter. Um, what did you think? Do you prefer one version over the other? Please list your comments below. Give me any feedback, and feel free to check out some other movies that you can watch in the comforts of your own home, or perhaps if you're ready to head out to the movie theaters. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, I appreciate everybody that has left comments and have watched the videos. I, and this channel would not be here without you, and I greatly appreciate you all. Thank you very much for watching.